96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in. AJ Brammer here in the studio. It's 9.04 AM, and it's the last Tuesday of the month of November, and the last Tuesday means it's time once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Service. It's our chance to check in with our area law enforcement leaders, and joining me once again for today's program, we have Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins and Jefferson County Sheriff's Department Chief Deputy Josh Taylor. So, Chief, Chief Deputy, thank you guys for coming on the program. Thanks again for having us. Thank you for having us and everybody that's tuned in to listen to us today. So it's uh, the last Tuesday of the month of November, so the holiday season is right around the corner. And so to start off our program today, uh, talk about a program. I know that you know for you guys, it's it's near and dear to your hearts coming up here soon. Yeah, definitely. We have the uh, Shop with a Cop, uh, Christmas with a Cop uh, program coming up. Uh, applications are available at uh, all three agencies currently, Hanover, Jefferson County, and Madison. Uh, folks can pick those up. I believe some of even our... Uh, uh, Salvation Army and those things also have applications. Um, applications deadline is uh, December 6th and uh, we are uh, tentatively shopping on December 19th um, at uh, the local Walmart. Uh, we'll be having a meal at the uh, VFW uh, prior to the uh, shopping event uh, but looking forward to that as we do every year. Uh, the kids, the smiles, the the, the way that everybody treats uh, everybody there and just uh, the out outpouring of support for it is just a great thing and again encourage people to uh, make donations uh, to the shop with a cop Christmas with a cop program you can mail them into the agencies uh, locally you can take them to German American Bank it is under FOP 128 which is our local uh, fraternal order of police lodge um, so yeah just uh, all around good time all around good thing for the uh, community and for the kids of this community that are a little less fortunate and unable for their families to be able to provide a full fun Christmas for them they get to you know go with us and get some things that maybe they wouldn't have gotten and again, with it, uh, great public interaction with these uh, children and their families uh, to show that we are there more than just to take people to jail, and it is fun. I enjoy looking at the social media afterwards where everybody's commenting and trying to figure out why there's 20, 30, 50 police cars going to Walmart and trying to figure out what type of raid was happening at Walmart. I believe we even uh, brought up the story uh, a few years ago where a citizen contacted the mayor and asked why uh, a school bus was being chased down Clifty Drive uh, by several police vehicles uh, from all agencies. Um, so it was noticed, or it has been noticed in the past, but it uh, was not being chased. It was just an escort uh, to Walmart. The kids love that, uh, having all the lights and sirens going and the you know on the way there. So yeah, uh, a citizen did uh, see that and contacted the mayor and said we have a, a pursuit going with a school bus. So it's uh, it usually does cause a lot a lot of attention. Uh, with all the the sirens and lights and police cars and the buses and the kids and it's a it's a real fun evening. I mean, you know, between uh, the meal at the VFW, and, uh, an appearance by Santa Claus as well. That's always exciting. Uh, you know, the opportunity for them to go shopping in and of itself. But yeah, that the pursuit or the drive over every yes. year is always just it's such a cool time just for everybody that's involved. And um, like you said, I know you mentioned the donations, so uh, applications still out there, but you guys are still accepting donations uh, for people that want to help. Yes, yeah, it can be donated uh, anytime year round. Uh, the account is there, the account is open. Um, so yeah, anytime anybody would want to make a donation to uh, to the account, like I said, they can either mail it into the agencies, drop it off to the agencies, it will get put into that account, or you can just drop by German American Bank and uh, ask to, for the money to be put into the Shop with a Cop, Christmas with a Cop, FOP, Lodge 128 uh, account. And it will make it into that account and be utilized uh, to spend on these uh, on these kids uh, every year. And you know, also, like you said, that's uh, you know the kids uh, kids a little less fortunate out there. Um, it's an opportunity for them to have have a good Christmas, and uh, that's just uh, this time of year that just means something special. Absolutely, and I think the the outpouring of support that we get from the community, the outpouring of support that we get from all the agencies, all the officers, and even uh, family and friends of the officers and things that want to come and help out, uh, it's uh, it's it's really nice to see. It really is. So one more time, uh, the applications are available at all of our area, all uh, all three agencies, and a couple other places, and they're due when? Uh, due back on December sixth uh, by four p.m. and then uh, shopping will be December nineteenth. So definitely looking forward to. Uh, Another fantastic Christmas with the Cop event coming up, so be sure to head out there and support that if you can. Um, as we head into the winter season, of course, with the holiday season, we are also obviously getting ready for you know the the winter weather, the change the, the change out there, and obviously that uh, does lead to some 
some sometimes difficult conditions with uh, driving out there, so we want everybody to be safe. Yeah, uh, this past weekend we had that uh, rain that turned into a little freezing over the overpasses and bridges. We didn't work many wrecks out in the county, but I know on Sunday morning out before it got above uh, 32 degrees, a lot of the areas were slick and uh, nasty, and we received all the Nixle warnings from EMA saying, hey, drive careful, pay attention. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of that here in the near future with the colder weather we're going to get. Yeah, definitely, uh, you know, preparedness is always uh, a key thing about it. I know uh, from experience riding in somebody else's car over the weekend that, you know, things like jumper cables are really important to have. Other uh, just uh, preparedness kits um, for the winter. That's always a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping a blanket in your vehicle is another good idea. Um, obviously, having your cell phone readily available and charged in case there is an emergency where you do need to to contact uh, assistance or help is a, is a good idea as well. Uh, fuel tanks in the vehicle not always empty. Try and keep them above a half a tank. I know sometimes it's not easy to do that with monetary issues during the holidays. But if you have a full tank of gas, at least it won't go and shut down and uh, you'll lose the heat you'll be able to get from point A to point B you won't be stranded uh, this past weekend we met uh, the sheriff's department did also a Hanover I'm not sure when you guys got your blankets from the Legion or if you had met we met with them on we met with them on Saturday morning uh, the American Legion uh, the Legion riders uh, had done a collection of blankets that they have where we can place those in our squad cars to give out to individuals in uh, time of need, uh, pass them out. I know out in Hanover we passed them out to some of the homeless individuals, uh, had them on hand, also blankets during wrecks or other critical incidences where we would need those to help keep people warm. And those are brand new blankets uh, brought by the Legion Riders. They're uh, heat sealed, uh, brand new. The officers can carry around their vehicles and you know give those out in need. Uh, as as he mentioned, uh, homeless, and even in a situation where there's an accident, you know someone's just not prepared for an accident or a breakdown. You know they may get cold or may need some some assistance there. We have those you know readily available, and we appreciate them bringing those to us and donating those to us and having those available for us to be able to use in those types of situations. Talking about the holiday season coming up, uh, obviously, uh, again, I definitely want people to go out there and support Christmas with a cop. But also, as we uh, get into the holiday season, I know, um, obviously, Thanksgiving this weekend, or well, this Thursday, we want everybody to have a happy Thanksgiving. But uh, as people head out, for, uh, for shopping. Uh, Black Friday, always a busy time, so I want people to be safe regarding that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have, uh, obviously, a lot of folks, extra folks in town uh, this week. Uh, families coming home for the holidays, coming home for Thanksgiving. Um, extra people out on uh, Wednesday night and Thursday night and through the weekend, I'm sure. Um, also, with the uh, Thanksgiving and Black Friday sales, encourage people to keep an eye out. Uh, a lot of people will be shopping, a lot of people out early uh, shopping, and uh, just keep an eye out, be safe, drive safe, uh, be cautious pay attention to the roads, pay attention to the parking lots for people, and just to also encourage folks, uh, Small Business Saturday yeah. uh, this week also, so encourage people to shop local, uh, go downtown, shop our local shops uh, on, along Main Street, uh, get out and uh, support them as well, and uh, just have a, have a real good uh, Thanksgiving week uh, from obviously Thursday on. With the security concerns of it, of having all the shopping, if you place them in your vehicles, make sure you lock uh, the items that you buy, lock your vehicle up when you, after you've placed them in there, double check it. Uh, also, don't leave things in view for individuals to see through the windows, a crime of opportunity. But once you get these items, also, uh, if you buy something on Black Friday that you're going to use immediately, not throwing everything out in the trash where they can see it, because if they see a 70 inch uh, screen TV box out in front, uh, that just advertises what you have inside your house. You may wait until the day of putting the trash out instead of putting it out by the curb or the dumpster the day that you receive it. Also, that would be days after Christmas or leading up when you guys have the presents opening. Um, just it advertises what you have, and it's a shopping list for somebody to come around if they want to take uh, the opportunity to break into your house and steal something. And that addresses, you know, the security of it after the fact, but also you know, it is that time, you know, with Black Friday, Cyber Monday coming up, uh, a lot of online shopping as well, so uh, it's the season of porch pirates as well.
We've had incidents in the past, but uh, I know success for our agency uh, has been with the ring doorbells, security cameras, neighborhood. There's more of those out there, so we've been able to handle some cr uh, crimes or identify. I know Madison, uh, frequently we pass back and forth information of, from security cameras. Hey, do you recognize this individual? And I believe we've been able to solve some crimes and prevent that just by letting the public know, hey, there are residential or private security cameras and we are getting access to them. And I think um, also, you know, kind of with that and also with, you know, talking about just being ready for winter prep as well, um, it's always good to, you know, keep an eye on your neighborhood. We say it all the time that, you know, the folks out there are the eyes and ears for, you know, our police departments, our sheriff's departments, but also uh, when it comes to the winter time, um, always a good idea to keep an eye on your neighbors because you never know when they might be in need of assistance. Yeah, absolutely, especially if neighbors are out of town something's going on where they that you haven't seen them in a few days you know, obviously checking on them but if they are out of town and uh, you know they're keeping an eye on their personal property keeping an eye on their residence their their belongings that are sitting outside in the driveway or around the house definitely a good idea to to, to help one another watch one another and keep an eye on, on on one another's things I think we spoke of it in the past with our neighborhood watch programs just uh, you know developing that phone tree and letting one another know when you're going to be home and when you're not um, so that they can help you keep an eye on your things and you can help them keep an eye on their things. And also with the season of giving, um, you know, you have a lot of organizations that are you know, raising money for worthy causes this year and uh, we want to support those but at the same time uh, with those fundraisers there are also people kind of taking advantage of that situation as well uh, so want to be on the lookout for scams as well. We've had several reports of scams yesterday our administrative assistant notified me that there's a scam going around using the fax machine number of the sheriff's department so if when in doubt if you have any questions make sure that you verify the source of where this is coming from an individual on the phone may call from a number that you recognize or you can Google and check and see where it's at but following it up with a call back to that area uh, if it's something local you might drive down there if before you decide to go along with it uh, but a lot of people are still failing for these scams that are too good to be true uh, when you apply online for something uh, secret shoppers or hey if you apply here we'll send you this to do at home business uh, type online job ads could be a scam you need to check into and especially if it sounds too good to make fifty thousand dollars from home in one month it's probably illegal or you're going to be scammed out of your hard-earned money uh, talking with Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins and Jefferson County Sheriff's Department Chief Deputy Josh Taylor. Um, Chief, as we come up on the end of the program, anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think as uh, Josh mentioned in the break, uh, we do have uh, officers graduating from the academy uh, the end of this month, uh, end of December, I'm sorry, end of December. Uh, we'll have two coming back. I believe they also have two yeah, coming two. back as well. So we're looking forward to obviously getting them out, getting them uh, through their training, getting them through their finalized process of getting out on the road and getting them out to you know help keep the community safe. So yeah, we have two graduating uh, the end of December and looking forward to getting them back back here with us. Yeah, I believe, or at least I know, our two deputies, uh, Shelton and Perry, are ready to get out of the classroom. I mean, 15 weeks of being up there for training, they're ready to get back into the community, start working and putting everything they've been learning about in the classroom to application in the real world. Um, also, Hanover Police Department recently last week, they swore in two new hires, uh, Kyle Pence and Max Gibson as uh, hires for new officers. Next year, they're going to be going through their training. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is also currently in a process of hiring. Uh, hopefully, here in the next couple of days, we can make announcements who those officers offer. The conditional offers have been extended to for a hire uh, with that. And we look forward to having new individuals out here. I always enjoy working with new young officers because their enthusiasm is there uh, to do different things and it also sparks um, some of the desire to get out there and do work and the old guys like myself that's where I enjoy working with the new guys showing them something but also having somebody with a new fresh passion for law enforcement absolutely we appreciate them coming on board yeah and we uh, as as he mentioned we do have the two graduating into December and then we'll have two more going uh, first two weeks of January so again uh, a, a constant process hopefully getting them filled back up and getting a, a fully staffed and stay fully staffed for a while um, but yeah I have uh, two more going I believe 
January 13th, uh, January, somewhere in, in through there, we'll be going uh, two more to the Academy. So looking forward to also getting them through and getting them back out here for us as well and getting us back to more fully staffed. As we wrap up the program, I know um, over the course of this past weekend, uh, we had had an incident in, in our area, but um, highlighting that was the, uh, highlights something that we talk about all the time on this show, how, you know, we have different officers in this area that may be wearing different uniforms, but ultimately everybody here is working together. Saturday morning there was uh, what's been deemed as an active shooter uh, out on East State Road 56 near the Switzerland County line. Uh, there was multiple agencies that responded, worked together, set up this. I mean, the quick action of the arriving scene officers, there was four officers from Madison Police Department that were on scene, two from Jefferson County State Police, two from Switzerland County, and their quick actions uh, helped get the family members that were inside the residence out in a quick timely fashion uh, unfortunately a trooper was injured later in the standoff which it became a contained uh, individual with firearms in a standoff situation and the trooper was injured shot in the leg uh, he's expected to make a recovery he's going to be off and he's got a road of uh, rehabilitation that's coming down there due to the extent of the injury but it was it's chilling and uh, when you get to a scene like that and you see how everybody's working together I mean there was nobody trying to set up a power struggle the guys were like hey what's going on uh, communicating effectively I mean, it just shows how all the agencies are able to work effectively together and there's no heads bumping in the years past uh, over the decades I've seen those types of situations but we're fortunate in this time uh, that everybody's willing to work together and it's just not about an ego of who's getting credit for it. It's just police work at its finest. Definitely glad to see the agencies working together and things working out the way that they did. Could have been even better, but uh, did work out the way that they did, and that's a, that's a positive thing. Well, we definitely, uh, like you said, definitely appreciate uh, everybody that worked together on that and happy that obviously obviously that the injuries to the officer were not worse than they were, but definitely um, the situation was contained well and definitely could have been could have been a lot worse. Um, the suspect was taken into custody uh, and he's got court. They have several charges. I mean, attempted murder on a law enforcement officer being one of them. Uh, he's had his initial appearance. He's in the court system and now justice will take its action and hopefully it's served. As we come up on the end of the program, anything else you guys would like to add? Just thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, again, be safe through the holidays and uh, keep an eye out. Uh, I know, speaking for all the law enforcement partners with whichever agency, uh, the public out of support and appreciation for us after this weekend. Uh, I know I was receiving messages from all over the state of Indiana from other law enforcement members, other individuals who were just civilians and citizens of the community here and other places checking and wanting to go and pass on the well wishes to all the officers uh, that were involved in that and then also not even the officers that were involved in it, just those that wear a uniform to protect the citizens of Indiana. Chief, Chief Deputy, thank you guys so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having us.